Raindrops, welcome back or welcome home. I'm Desiree, I'm the owner of Rainy Days Library, both the YouTube account, the TikTok account, and the business. And today we're gonna be talking about, drum roll please, my top 10 favorite small town romances of all time. So you probably already know this, but I am a huge romance lover and one of my absolute favorite tropes of all time is quite easily the small town romance trope. I live off Gilmore Girls vibes, so any small town romance type of thing is my type of thing. And today I have gathered 10 of my absolute favorite small town romances ever. I will say I do have like a couple of others that I do, that I did really enjoy, although these are like my ride or die, like, you ask me a small town romance, these are the ones that I will recommend. They are, they are my, not my pride and joy, because I mean, well, kind of like my pride and joy. Yes, we can say that. So before I get into all of these book recs, I realize that a lot of you often ask me where I get my jewelry from. And since today I'm wearing some new stuff, I thought I would like, just, you know, give you some dirt on the good stuff. So I am wearing pieces from Anna Luisa. These, my earrings, look how pretty. I will also insert a clip of me opening the box because who doesn't love an unboxing? So I have these earrings. These didn't come as a set. This earring here is one pair that I just took one of. And then these little like safety pins, I love it. This also came in a set, like two safety pins, but I just took one. And then this one here came as one piece. And then we've got this onyx ring. And then the best piece is this bracelet. Uh, do you know why? Do you know why it's the best piece? Because the name of this bracelet is Desiree. And like I mentioned, my name is Desiree, so it just... That's why it's the best piece, because it has my name. Anna Luisa make really high quality jewelry. Like this ring, you can tell. You know when you weight something and you can tell that it's like high quality weight? Does that make sense? I, I don't know, but you can tell that it's high quality stuff and it's really affordable for the quality that it is. The second thing that I love most about Anna Luisa is probably that they are carbon neutral and not just their actual products, all of their packaging is completely carbon neutral. So you see every piece comes in one of these uh, little sleeves. And you know, like when you get jewelry, sometimes it comes like, yeah, the packaging is really nice, but it's not really nice for the environment, right? But Anna Luisa had an idea. It's literally written inside their packaging. I'll put it here. They had an idea and they made it happen. So like their packaging, the, the, thing that the jewelry is on and their actual jewelry is carbon neutral, which is absolutely amazing. So it is one of my very, very big values. So that is like a hundred points to Gryffindor, but make it Ana Luisa. And one more thing, their designs are incredibly unique and they just like, okay, if you probably, you might not know this, but I love like dangly earrings. I, I don't know, they just make me feel some type of way and I love it so much. It just makes, it makes the fit, it makes the vibe and it makes me feel super confident because jewelry has that power, right? I have a bracelet that has my name. I mean, we're twins. Um, And I mean, how, like, what are the odds that it's named Desiree and it has daisies on it and I have a daisy tattoo. And we're also gonna talk about a book that has to do with daisies. If you know, you know. And what's even better is that I have a discount code for you guys if you want to go get your own dangly earrings or your own Desiree bracelet or whatever else because Ana Luisa has so many pieces to choose from. I will have a link at the very top of the description box. You just have to click on there and you will be redirected to Ana Luisa. And I have a discount code for you guys to save 10% off your entire order if you use Rainy Days Library 10 you will get 10% off. I will put, again, the link and the discount code in the description box and treat yourself. You deserve it. That sounds like some kind of mantra. It's cheesy, but it's true. You deserve it. 
treat yourself like you know buy a couple pieces of jewelry maybe you'll want a ring or a pair of earrings or something school's about to start back up you wanna like you need the right jewelry to make the fit i have stated my case let's now move on to the small town romance books so i don't exactly know where to start i guess we're just gonna go for it because that's usually what i do on this channel right i it's chaotic i don't know what i'm doing i just kind of go for it so the very first book i don't exactly think that this is necessarily like super small towny like you know most small town romance books like the female main character will leave the city and go to a small town and fall in love and blah 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 but this just like the entire book is small town vibes and what's even better is that this is probably the most Gilmore Girls-ish book that I have ever read. And it's called My Life Next Door by Huntley Fitzpatrick. Her writing is so, so good. And it's so, like, it's so feel-good. And it's, it's the kind of book that you read when you're either about to hit a slump or when you just need something that's really comforting. This is it. It's so, so, so good. So basically, uh, Samantha Reed is the daughter, like her mom's a politician, okay? And they're like this very like super neat and tidy and like we follow the rules type of family. And then her neighbor next door is like one of, I don't know, I think there's seven kids. And like they're a very chaotic family and you know, just like have fun, laugh, just actually live life without planning everything minute by minute, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I am kind of that kind of person, but not always. So I was kind of able to understand both families. I kind of, you know, combination of both. But anyways, uh, so I'm just gonna read the back because I read this like, I think I read this two years ago? No, a year ago, a little over a year ago. So one night, Jace Garrett, one of the Garretts next door, climbs the trellis outside her bedroom and she just sees him and she's like, hmm, what's he doing there? Like it's past bedtime, you know, like living by the rules. And so she's intrigued and he enters her life and she falls in love. It's literally like just the perfect love story. It, like if I were to compare this to Gilmore Girls, I would probably say he's Jess. Like that's... Yeah, he, he's a Jess, I think. Like, he he might be like a combination of Dean, Jess, and Logan. A little bit. Well, Logan is like, you know, he, he's the rich boy. And Jace is more like Dean and Jess. So that that's kind of the vibe. Plus his own like Jace Garrett thing. But this is so sweet. It's the perfect summer romance. And like I said, it's not necessarily small town romance, but it does give off the vibe. All the other books that I have here with me today, though, are set in an actual small town. This, like, I think, I can't remember. I read it so long ago. Like, you can see the tabs. I, it's been a very long time since I have annotated this way. I don't even know what the colors mean anymore. But this was so sweet, so heartwarming. And there's, like, it's, it's leaving me speechless like it's the perfect like romeo and juliet type of thing like samantha is you know the neat and tidy family and her mom's a politician and you know it's all very strict and then jace is the like i don't know he's the brother to like seven or eight other kids and he he represents like you know chaos and bad and you know he's like how could i say this you know when you read a book and it's like bad boy falls in love with like the poor girl that's kind of the vibe except that jace is the poor they're not poor they're just like a huge family and they're not as well off as samantha because Samantha's mom's a politician and they have the big house and they have to vacuum every day and that that's an actual thing like you will you will read a lot about vacuuming in this book but that's kind of the vibe 
And see, it says a boy, a secret, a choice. So Samantha keeps it a secret from her mom. I am rambling about this book. It, I, it's been too long. But anyways, I strongly recommend this if you're looking for something that's like Gilmore Girls. That's pretty easy to read. That's sweet and adorable and kind of... It's rather family oriented. Samantha finds what she never had with her own family through Jace's family and it's so heartwarming. Definitely recommend this one. So we're gonna stop talking about it because if I keep going, I'm gonna spend like half an hour on it. The next book, Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. I have talked about this in my June wrap up. Was it June or May? I can't recall, but anyways, this is City Girl Goes to a Small Town, but that's when she's a kid. <coughs> Excuse me. So Persephone or Percy's parents buy a lake house in like by the lake in Ontario and so they leave Toronto to go there every summer and on holidays and when they first move there there are the neighbors, the neighbors kids Sam and Charlie. Charlie's the older brother, Sam's the younger brother, he's the same age as Percy. They become friends, they become best friends, they become teenagers and are more than best friends and then when they go to different schools for for college and university something happens and when I tell you that I screamed when it was revealed what broke them up oh my actual gosh I was not expecting it but I was kind of expecting it but it was so good and then like this is like the way that they reunite about like over 10 years after, like I think they're in their 30s now, they reunite because Sam's mom passed away. Charlie called Percy to tell her the news and then she goes back to the, to the small town and they just kind of bond again. Like their bond never truly was gone, but they kind of like the sparks fly up again, if you know what I mean. And so I finished this in two days. I I had a blast annotating it. Um, truly such a good book. Absolutely amazing. And what I love the most, well, the most, what's one thing that I absolutely love about it is that this is a Canadian author and there are a lot of Canadian references and it's set in Ontario. I'm not from Ontario, I'm from New Brunswick. But like, you know, reference to stopping at Tim Hortons, getting a double-double, Toonies, Loonies, maple syrup, bacon. It's... <laughs> It's very, I don't know, it, it, it feels nice that I can relate to what's being talked about because, like, I've never went to Dunkin' Donuts. I, we don't have one of those around here. I come from a small town, okay? I come from a smaller town than this. Like, we don't even have a grocery store or a cafe or anything, so I slightly relate to small town romance books, although not all that much because my small town is, like, smaller than small. Anywho, next book is One Night on the Island by Josie Silver. I talked about this in my my very, very first monthly wrap-up, which I think was May or April. I don't I don't even know. I don't know. Anyways, this book follows Cleo and Mac. I suck with names, I always forget them, that's why I was looking. Cleo is about to turn 30, she's working as a columnist for this magazine in London, and her boss slash best friend is like, girl, you're going to a small island in Ireland, I'm sending you off there, count it as work, you're gonna marry yourself and you're gonna write about it. Because she's 30 and she's not married and she doesn't have kids, you know? So she is sent off to this very small island in Ireland called salvation island it's not a real place which is a bummer because i would have bought a plane ticket and gone there immediately if it was because it sounds so nice and so when she gets to the very nice cottage on salvation island she's so happy you know she's settling in and then looking at mac he is from the united states his wife is not into their relationship anymore she wants a divorce they have two kids he is still insanely in love and he doesn't want to break up so he says okay i'm gonna give you your space I'm gonna go back to Salvation Island, bring my photography equipment as a photographer, and I'm gonna reconnect with my roots because that's where his grandma comes from. And so he goes there and his second cousin twice removed, I don't know, some kind of complicated family tree thing, says, I can rent you my cottage. You can go from then to then, you know, take the time you need, relax, and then get back to your wife and everything will be fine. So when he gets to the cottage and he goes inside, 
And he finds Cleo standing there right in front of him. He's like, what? What are you? Who are you? What, what are you doing here? Why are you in my cottage? And she's like, who are you? And what are you doing in my cottage? I rented this place and I paid for it. So you follow the story of these two complete strangers who had a mishap in booking the same place and Salvation Island has nowhere to stay, like no hotel or anything. And so they're stuck staying in the same place until the boat comes back to Salvation Island to bring them to the main island, which takes about a week. But then some mishaps happen that it can't come back after a week. And so they have to stay together in that cottage for I don't remember how long. So at first, they're both kind of grumps with each other. They kind of can't stand each other. And so it's so interesting and so entertaining in the couple first days when they're living together because, oh, it's so funny. And then as time passes, you know, they're like, might as well make the best of it. Like, can we at least be friendly? You know, we can have dinner together and be like civilized adults about this. <laughs> and so they, they do that, kind of become friends in the progress. There's obvious attraction. They become more than friends. Um, and so then Mac has to go back to the States some stuff is cleared up. It's such a happy ending. It's so beautiful. And Cleo's self-marriage ceremony is honestly so nice. Like you would think it's cheesy or corny or whatever, but it was actually really, really nice because she does so. Like she, she did the ceremony right by the water. And if you know me, I have basically been brought up by the ocean. Uh, if not the ocean, some kind of river or something. Like, I have a river right behind my house. And so, any body of water brings me immense joy, so reading this was pretty nice. So, this is the perfect small town romance if you want to do, like, enemies to lovers. Um, let's, let's do, like, the tropes here. This was neighbors next door to friends to lovers. This is also neighbors next door, childhood best friends to lovers. This is enemies to friends to friends to benefits to lovers. And then the next one, you all know this was gonna be in here. Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan. I could not talk about small town romance without having this one in here. Especially, I mean, I have a tattoo for it, right? Dandelion. So when Brie goes to this super small, adorable town to kind of get past her previous trauma that is honestly like, oh my good gods, this girl has gone through hell. So when she gets there and, you know, she starts learning about people around and she learns about Archer. Archer is this, oh god, I love this man so much. He was in an accident when he was a kid that resulted in him not being able to talk anymore because something was damaged in his um, vocal box, voice box? I, I can't remember what it's called. Anyways, he can't talk. And because of that, he's also very, you know, closed off. He wasn't the one to go out and talk to others. This boy has been through some really, really tough stuff. And so people just thought that he was a grump. He hated everyone. He didn't want to talk to anyone. And so no one talked to him. That's not how it works, people. Anyways, so one day, Brie goes to the grocery store and she buys herself a bunch of chocolate bars and she drops them on the ground and Archer is there and he helps her pick them up. And that's like, that's their meat cute, okay? And, um, oh my God, it's so beautiful. It has, like, they become literally best friends. Like, Archer only lets her in after they meet for like maybe after meeting for two or three times he slowly starts to let her in they fall in love so beautifully like archer is inexperienced in everything and so brie is his first everything and it's oh my god it's truly it's so beautiful there's a reason this went viral on tiktok and why so many people love it there's a reason why i have a dandelion tattoo and there's a reason why I will always and forever recommend this book. I cried, I laughed, I raged, I screamed, I I blushed, I looked away so many times. Um, truly a work of art. This is Strangers to Friends 
to the most beautiful lovers I will ever ever read. The end epilogue is like them married with kids. We love that. It's it's always such a treat to have just like a small epilogue of them happy and married and everything's good. So you have to read this if you haven't. The next one, this is a more emotional book. Uh, I Is it the most emotional one that I have in here? Yes. It's the one where I probably cried the most. This is The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. It's actually book one in a trilogy, I think. I can't remember exactly how many books there are in this series. I haven't read all of them, but I have read The Simple Wild. And so this book follows Kala, who is from Toronto. And so when Kala's mother and father met, they met in, um, I think they met in Alaska, and Kala's father is the owner of an airport in Alaska. And he was never gonna leave. Alaska is like, it's his home. He's not leaving, it's where he belongs. And Kala's mother was like, I cannot live here anymore. I'm taking my daughter and I'm leaving. And so she left, she went back to Toronto and that's where Kala grew up. And so she had an okay relationship with her dad for the first couple of years. And um, then something happened where he stopped calling and so she stopped calling and that kind of like, you know, broke their relationship. But then when Kala is like an, an adult, she gets a phone call and she learns that her father has cancer and he only has a few months left to live. And so she goes back to Alaska after I don't know how many years and she's kind of hesitant. Like, am I gonna meet him again and like not hit it off and I will have gone there for absolutely nothing? will like go there, get really, really close with him and then have to lose him and just, you know, lose him all over again, but this time for good. Oh my God, I wanna cry just talking about it. And so when she gets there, she has to take like a teeny tiny plane to go from one place to the actual town in Alaska. And the pilot, might I say, is one very, very fine man, um, Jonah. Even his name sounds like the perfect small town love interest. So Jonah is a grump. Jonah has kind of a grudge against Kala because he also lost his father and he's just like, stop being so mean and just try to get close with him because you don't, you really don't know. Like you could lose him any minute. So make the best of it, right? But <laughs> Jonah lives right next to Ren, who is Kala's father and Kala is staying with her father. So they're kind of neighbors. And so it's the perfect enemies to kind of friends to lovers. I swear, like at the start, they absolutely hate each other. They can't stand each other. And then they start teasing each other. Like the, the, the hate turns into teasing and then the teasing turns into flirting. Oh, it's so beautiful. I swear to God. And it's like, I would say that it's a happy ending by itself like i don't know why the book like why it continues because this would have been fine by itself i will say but i am intrigued to see where this goes so i will probably be getting book two relatively soon beware that you will cry like i told you this is the one that i cried the most for but it's such a nice small town like it's it's so entertaining like at the start i was kind of closed off. I wasn't very open to like falling in love with the characters, mostly because I read a review on Goodreads saying that uh, Kala was just like a spoiled brat and that the characters were just mean and not interesting. And that's one of the many reasons now why I never read reviews before reading a book because I like to have my own opinion, right? I do kind of get influenced easily like I just mentioned, I started reading this book and I was like, oh yeah, that's true. Like they're, they're kind of not, not nice and blah, blah, blah. But if I would have gone in completely, you know, not knowing anything or not having read any reviews, I think I would have been far more or open to it. So all of this to say, just go in with an open mind. Yes, the characters are rude and Kala is, I mean, she's from Toronto. And she's going in a small town in Alaska. And she comes from like, very, very, what's it called? She is well off. 
okay? Like, she had very, very, very expensive things and a light, a nice life and all of that fancy schmancy stuff. And then she goes to Alaska, where it's not so fancy schmancy. So it kind of, it gives off a vibe of It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. Piper is, you know, literally the image of rich and well off and then going to a small town and being like, ew, what's this, you know? Kind of like Schitt's Creek. This does remind me of Schitt's Creek a little bit, but truly so, so, so emotional, so good. I am excited to see, like, what's the rest? What's gonna happen? What's, what's the deal? Um, so if you want something more emotional, definitely give this a go. The next book is another one that you all know I will always recommend, and that is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score. Yes, she's thick, okay? This is a big story, but it's so good, okay? So this follows Naomi. Her twin sister, Tina, is living in this really small town, and she is raising complete chaos. And one day, Tina calls Naomi, and she's like, I'm in trouble. Can you come and help me? So Naomi goes to the small town, and when she gets there, Tina tricked her. Tina stole her car, went to Naomi's hotel room, stole a bunch of her stuff, and she also happened to leave her 11-year-old daughter in Naomi's bedroom. So the story revolves around how Naomi is trying to, you know, settle in this new town. Knox, the grumpy, like, everybody knows him. He's the big grump of the town. He's trying to help her because he does know um, Wei Weile, that's Tina's daughter. He does know her and he wants to make sure that she's okay and that she's safe, but he also has a kind of has a little thing for Naomi, but he's the kind of guy who doesn't want a serious relationship, but they can't ignore the chemistry between each other so it's kind of like enemies to frenemies with benefits to friends to lovers yeah that's pretty much sums it up so beautiful this is what i mean like daisies like like desiree here and like desiree here so when naomi gets in town she ran away from her own wedding and she had daisies in her hair and so when she meets Knox for the first time, he starts calling her Daisy. And it has to do with the very end of the book as well. You have to read it. Knox's brother, Nash, is also kind of interested in Naomi, but he does back off after a while. But book number two, uh, Lucy Score just posted on her TikTok account saying that she finally finished the first draft for book two, which follows Nash's story. Oh, I'm so excited. I am truly so excited for book two. I was kind of hoping it would be about Lucian uh, or Lucy because that is like, there are three best friends in here. There's Knox, Nash, and Lucian slash Lucy. So I was hoping it would be about Lucy, but it's about Nash and I don't really, I don't mind. It's, it's going to be good. This is another amazing, like the small town in here is a dream. I want to go there. I think it's in Virginia if I'm not mistaken. I want to go. I want to go very, very badly. Uh, the next one is also by Lucy Score, and I wanted to keep this one for the end because I didn't finish reading it. This is what I'm currently reading, but I can't help but recommend this because it's such a perfect small town romance book. And this is Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score. Again, I swear to the heavens above, this is such a good book, okay? If you know Mr. Kate on YouTube, you know, like, Mr. Kate and her husband go to different houses and they renovate. Like, she's an interior designer and he's a contractor. I don't know, something like that. They renovate. Maggie has the same type of thing. She has a YouTube channel where she buys homes. She brings them, like, she renovates them and brings them back to life tells the story of the house and the people around the house in the city or town and then she sells it to whoever buys the house and then she moves on maggie moves on and so now she is renovating the campbell house which is this huge mansion with a bunch of history in this teeny tiny town and the guy that she hires <laughs> oh i swear to god silas i think that's how you pronounce his name his nickname is Sai. Anyways, she meets him and he falls in love at first sight. Like, he sees her and the first thing he says is, wow. Wow. Do you know how he refers to her to his family? 
my future wife. I don't usually like insta-love, okay? But the fact that Maggie is so set in not staying in kinship, that's the this, this small town, the fact that she is so set in not staying there and so set on not falling in love with Sai and him being like literally just following her everywhere like a puppy dog and his dog as well, Kevin. Kevin is so adorable. I love him. It makes it so good. And I am, I'm on page 244 of 404. I have this left. It's so good. Oh my God. And he's like, whatever you can give me, I will take it. And she says, fine, we can have some fun, but I'm not staying and I'm not falling in love with you. So because he bet five bucks, she would stay and fall in love with him. And she said, so get your five bucks ready because I'm not staying, but we can still have some fun. So they have some fun, but it's obvious what's going to happen, right? I still have not hit the point of like the fight or the argument or the breakup. You know, there's always that in romance books. I wonder if there's going to be one because I am, well, I think I'm about close to 75%. Anyways, this is so amazing. Literally, like combine Mr. Kate on YouTube with Gilmore Girls. That is what it is. It's, it's so good. I swear you have to read it. And yes, it's spicy, just like things we never got over. Lucy's score is literally the queen of small town romances. Next. All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. This woman has her own shelf, okay? I have only read three of her books so far. I've read The Wall of Winnie Peg and Me, From Luke of With Love, and All Roads Lead Here. I read this in two days. Two or three, I think it was three, sorry. I read this in three days. Oh, was it ever good. Oh my God, was it ever good. It has grumpy sunshine, enemies to lovers, um, neighbors, small town, single parents. Ah, so good. Oh my God, I swear to God. Okay, so Aurora moves back to the small town where she came from because she has, she divorced her husband. I won't talk too much about that because it's a big part of the plot and it's it's like it's not talked about on the back of the book so I don't want to spoil anything but anyway she goes back to her hometown and she had rented like this garage apartment and when she gets there she goes upstairs and um, then she hears someone going upstairs and she thinks it's like the owner of the Airbnb when Rhodes gets there he's like what are you doing in my house and then his son, Amos, goes upstairs and he's like, Dad, wait, I rented it. How do you expect me to make money if you won't let me get a job? Oh, I love this kid so much. And so they end up letting her stay and they become friends and they go hiking together and he gets very, very protective of her. And Am is just absolutely, he adores her. So much friendship, so much love such beautiful family stuff it's oh, I want to reread it again and the banter is so good and you know Rhodes is really really grumpy but he does crack a smile and a laugh for her once in a while and it's so sweet oh my god it's so sweet so good I I love them so much and if you've ever read a Mariana Zapata book before you know that her writing style is superior okay this woman I don't know what she puts in her writing, but it's so good. She's funny. She's heartfelt. She's she's so like, she's so real. If if you can get what I mean, like her writing does get you to like escape reality to get into the actual story, but it also feels so so real. Like it's not embellished. It or, or anything like it's incredibly real and I think that's what I love most about her writing plus her humor is top tier I swear this was like I I read this at this like at the very end of July it was the first book I finished in August and I've been on a rampage for small town romances so far this month so good the next one is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. I bought this because it was said to be literally Jess and Rory. Macy loses her mother. Her dad buys a kind of like a cottage house uh, by a lake. 
and they go there every summer and on the holidays. She meets Elliot and they become best friends and you know, they become more than best friends and then something happens and misunderstandings happen. And so they split up and they meet again many, 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 many years later. And if I'm not mistaken, they just somehow cross paths at a cafe and that like kickstarts the rekindling and so secrets surface truths are told and they make up i'm so happy and it's so heartwarming and it is very very jess and rory very very jess and rory they both read in like she turns her walk-in closet into like a little reading nook and that's like their thing they read in there like every single summer <laughs> And I think, like, that's what I love. I think that's why I loved it so much. It was so me, if that makes sense. I did cry at this, and I did get frustrated. I threw the book across the room a couple times. Um, you can't see it. I didn't dent it or anything, but I did get mad. But it was truly so, 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 so good. I, I love this book so much. I love it so much that I got the new version as well. Um... But I, I kind of, I mean, yes, this one is absolutely adorable, but I do kind of like having the original one as well. And then the very last one is kind of a fantasy as well as a small town romance. This is The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. I have talked about this one quite a couple times. If you have watched the movie Just Like Heaven with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo, this, this is, and if you loved it, you want to read this. You want to read it so bad. Florence and her dad share this skill where they can, skill, not a talent. Um, they share this power that they can see ghosts. And so Florence, she's a ghost writer for this super, super popular romance author. And when she goes to meet her new editor, she's like, can I please extend my due date? Because it's, the manuscript is not finished. The reason why it's not finished, she's a romance author but doesn't believe in love anymore and she's having a hard time writing her next romance novel. And her new editor, which is a rather good looking man named Ben, is like, no, I'm not extending it, you have to hand it in. And then she gets a phone call saying that her dad has passed away. After meeting with the editor, you know, I think a day or two passes by, she gets a phone call and her dad has passed away. She goes back to her hometown, which is the small town, and her parents owned a funeral home. How perfect, right? And so when she gets there, they're reading the will, someone knocks at the door. Florence is the one to get up and goes to open the door. Who is standing there? It's Ben the hot editor. And he's totally confused. Like, he's like, Miss Day? Like, what am I doing here? And then a gust of wind happens to blow by. And what doesn't move in the wind? Ben's hair. What does that mean? It means he's a ghost. And so throughout the story, I swear, it's so beautiful. You see how Florence grieves the loss of her father and how she is trying to not move past it, but rather live with this loss and she's also trying to help Ben move move on, you know, like do whatever he needs to do to go to heaven. And so, I swear, there's a scene in this book where Florence dances with Ben in, um, in the funeral home. It's, oh, I cried. I'm not kidding, I cried. It was so beautiful. And this book in general was so beautiful, so well written. I, I adore this with my entire heart. That was the very last small town romance book that I have to recommend for you today. I really hope that you found a couple new titles that you will hopefully buy. I know that I often influence you to buy books after you watch my videos. I would say I'm sorry, but I'm genuinely not. You deserve it. You deserve to buy those books. Even if your bank account gets into the negatives, you deserve it, okay? So I hope you might get a few of them. And if you do, let me know what you think. If you post on your Instagram story, tag me. I want to see it. If you want to talk about the book, 
DM me on Instagram. I want to talk about it. So that was it. Before I get going, remember, if you want to get yourself a nice little treat and save 10% off your order, you can go to Ana Luisa by clicking the link at the top of the description box. And don't forget to use the code RAINYDAYSLIBRARY10 to save 10% off. I will also put the names of all the pieces that I personally got. I have five different pieces, the bracelet, the ring, um, this earring set, and then this pair, the little nice little dangly earrings, and then the safety pins. I will put all of those as well in the description box, the names of the jewelry that you can find by clicking the link and going to the website and looking them up. So I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. Get yourself some jewelry, get yourself some books, get yourself some coffee. I don't know, whatever makes you happy, do it. You deserve it. It's the end of the summer. School is about to start up again. Life is about to really start up again. Just have some fun for the next couple of weeks. I, I think my leaving message, my parting message, I should say, for you is to at least do one thing that you normally could not do during the year. Like, you know, what I mean by, by that is this summer, the last couple of weeks of summer that we have, at least do one thing that you could normally do, like during the school year or during, you know, regular life. Like for me, that would be reading as much as I do. So that's one thing that I do. I don't usually have as much time to paint, so that's another thing that I do. You just need at least one. You could do one every week that we have left of the summer, or at least one throughout whatever, throughout the time that we have left. Just one thing. You deserve it. You deserve to do something that you love and that makes you happy, whether that be buy yourself some jewelry, or buy yourself some books, or you know, go outside and paint, whatever that is. Do it for yourself, you deserve it. We've had a tough couple past years. We're probably gonna have a tough couple future years as well. Treat yourself right, have fun, and I will see you guys in the next one. Mm -hmm.